React India. Hey everyone, good morning. Uh, how's it going on? Day two and third talk. I think I've got people in the house, so I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Great. Uh, there's some technical glitch, so I'll have to stand towards the end of the edge of the stage to use the keyboard. Uh, but yeah, that's me. That's how I look like on the internet. Uh, that's what we do at conferences, you know. Okay, you're that guy. <laughs> Great. So, okay. There's another technical glitch. I'm not able to. Okay, cool. Give me a second. Okay, so yeah, I'm Sanket Sahu. Uh, you might already know I run a company called Geeky Ants, uh, Bangalore based. Uh, we are big on social communities. We run React Native uh, Bangalore meetup group. This is the largest React Native meetup group in the world. And uh, you might know me from Native Base, uh, which is a UI component library for React Native. And now we are working on the next version of Native Base. We call it GlueStack, which is a uh, uh, UI component library that works on Android, iOS, and web, all from the same uh, code base. So yeah, that's GlueStack. And yeah, uh, this is the caravan that people have been talking about. Uh, I've got some pictures from yesterday, too, uh, to show you guys here. OK, so this, was, this is how it turned out to be uh, last night, which was pretty amazing. So yeah, great. So I hope to see you there again. Uh, maybe sometime today, those who didn't join yesterday. Great, uh, so, but the number of people who showed up and also showed the interest, uh, that got me thinking about my talk. Should I do it on Next.js, WordPress, anything of that sort, or do a talk on building a caravan from scratch in India, <laughs> right? Uh, I've got approvals from the organizers, and I'm going to talk about building a caravan from scratch in India. Just kidding. <laughs> so my talk is about uh, building WordPress-like plugins, but for next years. Any WordPress uh, users in the house? OK, PHP. Great. Uh, so <laughs> the number of features, <laughs> the number of features that we have got from PHP to JavaScript ecosystem through next years, I think this tells you the story. The dad feeding the baby and wearing a mask of the mom, and that mom is next year's. Not just that, but even Astro looks a lot like that. The top part the, of the Astro files, the Mattermost section, it rings a bell with the PHP counterpart, right? Great. Uh, so yeah, uh, building WordPress-like plugin system for next year's. Uh, so there's a story. So this is a story about a person. His name is Kabir. Uh, we are in India, we can use that name. Uh, call it Kabir Khan or Kabir Singh or ZNMD Kabir Divan, maybe. <laughs> great. Uh, I've got my dog show up, so. Okay, great. So, Kabir wants to build a login system uh, in next years, and uh, he goes through different things, like different steps, uh, and he wants to build it from scratch. So uh, the first thing that he does is uh, create a login page, the UI, then adds the form validation with maybe Zod, and uh, submit the form, uh, maybe write the logic around the form submission. Then build uh, the login API uh, in the API route folder. And then uh, the authentication middleware to lock different routes. right? And uh, then build a home page for users uh, then log, log out API endpoint, log out functionality, routing, middleware configuration, cookie management, and whatnot. So these are a lot, lot of steps, like just to get something uh, like as basic as an authentication system in your website and app, right? It's, it's a lot, lot of steps. Uh, and uh, even if you use uh, something like uh, a library, like uh, we have a bunch of them. The most famous ones are NextAuth and the Ion uh, session plugin, session package that we get with uh, Next.js. Uh, Next.js documentation itself has a lot to talk about authentication. Uh, it starts from authentication pattern, which is very similar to what I just showed on the screen. Uh, the stages and the steps that you have to go through to build a login system. Uh, they talk about uh, how you can do it with static site generation or even the server side. Uh, 
patterns that you can use with the authentication. Uh, and then we have providers, as I, I was talking about, like with Ion Session and Next Auth example that they have. If you have your own database, then you would use a bit of it. But this gives you half of it. The rest half you have to implement yourself, the database part. While we have third party uh, services, uh, right from Auth0 to Clerk, Firebase, Superbase, and whatnot, uh, which gets you into their own ecosystem. So you lose some control, but still, they are pretty cool. You can use it, and uh, you get the logging system on your website. Great. Uh, and then Kabir wants to include analytics, for example, Google Analytics. So he goes and looks at the packages and uh, adds those packages through NPM, and then manually puts them into provider and where, like the API uh, or the route middleware and at different places. So Kabir repeats the same steps over and over again for analytics, not just for that, but say even he wants to add newsletter feature, he does the same thing again and again and again, right? Install a package, use it, and then integrate it all by yourself. Great? Uh, tired Kabir. Kavir thinks that he can, while he can bring in packages, uh, it's, he has to do a lot of integration work beyond the packages, right? Feel like a Kavir? Yeah? Yeah? You are a Kavir, tell me. <laughs> Great. So wouldn't it be amazing if you could uh, get these features out of the box with a plugin system? So install an auth plugin and boom. It's there. Flashback. 2003. Magic. 2003. I'm pretty sure a lot of folks here are under the two. And we had the magic of WordPress as well. Not only that, I think I started my freelancing journey in 2003, so it's very special for me personally. Uh, great. So. Uh, What's WordPress? WordPress is uh, a CMS based on top of PHP. And uh, it's the long lost cousin of Next.js, you can say, in some sense, uh, in a different language, in a different world. But we have brought in features from PHP, right? So that's what WordPress was all about. A lot of inspirations, the great great grandfather of Next.js uh, was there. And it had something which we don't have still yet in Next.js, and that's plugins. What's uh, WordPress plugins? There's a, so with WordPress plugins, you can add features on your WordPress website, and uh, you can, you get this dashboard. Uh, this is the UI, but you can do it without the UI too. So uh, on the dashboard, you see, you can browse through a list of plugins, and then add them as soon as you add them you have that feature on the website without you going through the code at all. Uh, not just that, we also had FTP back then. This is the old FileZilla. I'm not sure if you have seen it, but a few of you must have. The good old days, or not so good old days, I'm not sure. But yeah, so this is an example. I got it yesterday from a YouTube video. Uh, that, uh, so on the left, you have your system files. On the right, you have your server files. And Say this guy is installing a contact form plugin on their website. So right click and then upload. And as soon as you do it, it'll show the progress bar how you're uploading things. And then as soon as it's there in the WP content plugins folder, that feature is enabled on your website. As simple as that. And you don't have to import and integrate anything yourself. So that's the idea behind using plugins. Great. So the ecosystem is really powerful. Uh, as of today, we have like more than 55,000 plugins in WordPress. And uh, yeah, they enable you visual and non-visual features, like from little tweaks to changing the whole website altogether. Uh, there are a few famous plugins that I can talk about. One is the SEO plugin. As soon as you have it, it enhances your website and adds all the essential tags that's needed for SEO. Then we have uh, WooCommerce. WooCommerce is one of the most famous plugins of the WordPress ecosystem that enables complete e-commerce uh, related features on your website. So from a static personal blog, 
once you install WooCommerce, uh, you get the entire e-commerce features on your website, right from shopping cart to product listing and payment gateway and everything. I have used this personally uh, to sell the very first template that I built uh, for $4. Uh, I think it was in 2011 or 2012. So yeah, thanks to WordPress and WooCommerce. Uh, then we have a Kismet anti-spam plugin. So this is another plugin. So we have a bunch of them. Uh, we can go through those on the website. Uh, so Kabir again thinks, why don't we have it with modern frameworks? We should have it. Great. So packages versus plugins. Uh, while packages stay in your node modules folder or uh, through a package manager somewhere in your uh, this thing, which is non-editable essentially, it's your responsibility as a developer to use them and integrate them. While uh, plugins let you install those things and also it adds end user functionality straight away in your app. So I've got a folder structure here uh, which has which is a very pretty standard Next.js app. It has pages, components, API, middleware, store, utils, all those things. And if you look at where is the auth part, so it's all distributed. We have a login page there. We have uh, the login form in components. We have, uh, say, a couple of API routes for login and logout. We have the auth middleware uh, there, and then the store auth slice as well at the bottom. Yeah? So it's all spread across your app. Wouldn't it be cool if we can do and move all these things and co locate them in their own folder? So, okay, we have feature wise co location. And it makes total sense. If you are working on a second project, you can just move this folder all the way to another project, right? And then it, it just works. So that's what plugin means. So I've got this little animation I really like. I'll play it again. So yeah, these features spread across your project in different files. Uh, while they are super related to each other, you can move them and co-locate them in something called a plugin folder, and we have the plugin auth over there. I hope it makes sense. Great. Uh, so in this experiment, uh, I have tried to build a file-based plugin system inspired by WordPress, and uh, it enables visual and non-visual features in your app. Okay. This was, I think, an eight-hour experiment, and took me two hours to record and do the GitHub readme, and then took me 40 hours for this talk. But anyway. Uh, the checklist from WordPress, uh, so file-based, uh, file system-based, persistent store per plugin. Plugins can register components, register routes, register functions. Uh, it also comes with an event system across plugins. So one plugin can talk to the other plugin. And then we have dependency management, like one plugin can depend on the other plugin too. So this is a checklist from WordPress. In the experiment that I did, I have uh, tried to implement these three features, that is file system-based, register components, and register routes. Uh, <clears throat> In uh, late 2019, early 2020, I built a plugin system called a React Pluggable. Uh, but this was for React, uh, not for Next.js. With the power of uh, meta frameworks like Next.js, we can go beyond this. So this is not maintained anymore. Uh, but we use this a lot, uh, especially if you know, uh, this is a design tool that I built uh, in 2017-18. Uh, this is called Builder X, uh, and this uses the React pluggable uh, which we built. But anyway, uh, let's build one for Next.js. Uh, so say if there's a plugin system, and uh, then we can build plugins that talk to the plugin system. We have like four plugins there. And this plugin system internally talks to, say, a store that maintains a component registry, route registry, and also hooks into and taps into the low-level APIs of Next.js, for example, the provider or maybe the catch-all route, and uh, maybe the middleware as well. I have a typo there. Anyway, great. So this is how the architecture looks like. So plugin system is an abstracted thing, and plugins only talk to that. And that plugin system talks to the rest of uh, the Next.js ecosystem and also maintains its own store. Great. Uh, so we maintain a plugin index.ts file wherein we add plugins. And as soon as you do it, boom, you have it in your app. Uh, 
and then we have like you can go on adding things in the plugins index.ts file in this experiment. Uh, so how do did I build it? So we have a plugin system class which has plugin store, which has register plugin method, and then we have boot plugin. So it boots, iterates through all the plugins and boots them. Integrating it with Next.js, so I've created a bootstrap.ts file wherein I uh, have instantiated plugin system and then looped through all the plugins and then booted them. Uh, using that bootstrap, uh, the plugin system uh, in app.tsx, so this uses the page router. I have not experimented with the app router yet, but yeah, this would just work. I have created a plugin context and a provider. So you do this setup only once for the plugin system, and after that, you can just add and remove plugins very easily. Uh, so it's all, all organized under a plugins folder over there. I have a demo. So the original uh, method that Kabir used versus how we can do it. So here I've got a very quick, okay, just a second. Let me just organize it, okay. Okay, so on the left side, I've got the downloads folder, and under that, I have the plugins folder that I just showed in the last slide. And then on the right, it's a running Next.js app with plugin system intact. So this is the auth plugin that I have. If I go and click on sign in right now, nothing works. It's just, there's nothing. So as soon as I bring this down into my project, this does a refresh and then you have the full blown login system in your app. Yes, you can click on sign in. Okay, there is an error. So I just refresh it once. Great, so yeah, so you can do, try to log in and then, this route didn't exist before I dropped that folder. And it's, it's not just the, the route, but it has everything that I showed in the first step, uh, from middleware to API routes to everything. So including the Zord validation. So let me just try doing this. Uh, and then once I click on sign in, we have the home home screen. So this is all working with the plugin, right from the API calls to, to the views that you see on the screen. So yeah, that's the first demo. And as, as I remove it, and then it just removed remove from the project. So we don't have anything. So if I refresh it, it should work. Okay. Okay, so it should ideally work. Yeah, great. So there's a watcher running behind the scene that does this. So uh, great. So this is the auth plugin that we have. Uh, so how do we write plugins? You may be wondering what's inside that auth folder. So to start uh, simple, you have to uh, like create a class and then implement this iPlugin interface. So for example, if you want to do the first plugin, like the Hello World plugin, for example, uh, you can do it by creating the Hello World folder inside plugins folder and create this file that has Hello World class uh, and then implements iPlugin. And then after that, you can go ahead and write the name, the version, uh, have an instance of the plugin system, and then constructor, and the most important part, the boot method. So this boot method gets you uh, the hello world alert message that you saw on the screen. Um, and I've used if type of window for the client environment only because this also runs on the back end. Great, so yeah, there we have the hello world plugin as I enable it and then uh, this is the code that we have. And as soon as I go and refresh it, we have the hello world alert appear there. So it's as simple as that. Great, uh, we have Few more examples. Uh, say if you want to register a route, here I have built a coming soon route. So as soon as you drop this plugin, you get that route and this page. And yeah, you do it very similar to the last step, but here you use plugin system dot register route, and then you can uh, drop in your component in from your plugin itself. Uh, and then we have a route store in the plugin system, and uh, yeah, it. It maintains all the key value pair of all the routes. And how did it tap into the Next.js ecosystem? So we have a catch all route. That's the feature, one of the features of Next.js. Uh, how do we handle dynamic routing? So catch all segments. 
and then I have created this all.tsx file in the pages all.tsx file, which looks like uh, this. So this is all the all.tsx, and it pulls all the routes and then returns the matched route. Uh, as simple as that. Great uh, register components. Uh, say if I want a share plugin, share button plugin that you see on the bottom right corner of the screen. Clicking on that should give me the share icons from different platforms. So this is very similar. This is a share button plugin, and then we have register component instead of register route, and then we pass in the component, and here we have a name. Now other plugins can fetch the share button by name. So uh, we come back to coming soon page, for example, and then we have the share button, get all comp components, and then the coming soon page can also have this. So this is not being imported, if you see. So share button is coming from the plugin system and not from an import. So this disconnects the implementation from where you use it. Right? So uh, yeah, it makes it really easy if you want to swap it out with some other share plugin at a later point. Great. Uh, then uh, we also have a component store with the plugin system, very similar to the route store that we had. And uh, yeah, this is the example. So as soon as you enable the social share button plugin, uh, look at all these things. And uh, yeah, so as soon as we enable and refresh this, so we have the share button plugin. Yeah? Great. Uh, so uh, I have a few more examples. So I have these plugins, uh, AI chatbot plugin, why not? Uh, so as soon as I bring this from here to here, now this should refresh. Yeah, and then we have this chatbot available on your website. And this integrates with everything, uh, right from the API calls to the local states and everything. And if you don't want it, you just remove it. And you get it in your project, so you can also edit how it looks like and do a bunch of different things. We have, say, auth plugin, coming soon page that I just showed, so it appears over here. And uh, yeah, it should be there. Okay, so we have got this. And as soon as we drop the social share button plugin, it comes up here, and then it can be used. Great, uh, and we are missing the most important plugin. Just a second. Yeah, the confetti plugin. Yeah. <laughs> so this adds the confetti on my website. <laughs> Great. Uh, so yeah, uh, and then we have, if you want to remove them, you can just remove it. Great. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, I'll just quickly demo the source code, and the VS code doesn't appear to be here. Just a second. Oh. Okay, so how did I implement the auth plugin? Great, uh, so we've got a folder for auth over here, and then in the boot method, it does all the steps that Kabir initially did, right from registering the route to register the second route, the home page, API route, uh, and another API route for logout, and then uh, register middleware, for example. And uh, yeah, this is all co-located in the plugins auth folder altogether. And we can also abstract it out, but yeah, this is the entire logout uh, handler and the route as well that uses the component home. Great, so yeah, this is how it is built. And uh, you might be wondering, uh, how does it auto-import things? Like when I drag and drop, it automatically loads all the files, right? So there's a little watcher that's running, and right before I boarded the flight, I asked ChatGPT to write the code, and it wrote, and I just pasted and ran it. It just worked. So what it does, it watches the plugins folder, and then uh, automatically up updates the index.ts file, which is over here. So plugin index, plugin index. So this is auto-generated. As I drag and drop the, the folders, this, this auto-generates. Uh, and uh, watches the next year's uh, watch file watch system automatically picks that up and then refreshes the page. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's about the plugin system. I should go back. 
Great. Uh, if you want to have a look at the source code, so it's available as an experiment. Uh, you can scan this QR code and start it. That works for my motivation to actually uh, build it as a thing. Right now, it's very experimental and it's all there. Uh, so what's the takeaway from this talk? The first takeaway is plugins enable co-location by feature, which is super important and it's hardly seen in the Next and React world. And I think we should bring it back. Uh, and the second takeaway is uh, your code abstraction should not stop at packages. You can bring in packages and also bring in some templates along with that package that's editable. Uh, and if you do that, uh, I think it makes it super easy for anybody, any developer to start picking up things. You just run a plugin and then you have all the source code, the developers, the newbies, the ones who are learning, they can just see the source code and then build their own thing. It makes it very, very easy for them. So the code abstraction should not stop at packages. And that's the Tailwind philosophy, in fact. Like Tailwind made it famous to copy paste the templates and it just works across the projects because they ask you not to use class names, which is different across projects. And uh, Shad C and UI, if you have used it, for example, that's a copy pasteable UI component library, right? Built on top of Radix plus Tailwind. Have you guys used it? Shad C and UI, yeah? Okay. So, yeah, so the final takeaway, which is the most important one, is copy paste is the future. <laughs> great. So, that's been my time. I'm Sanket. And uh, let's learn from each other, build great things. And yeah, you can follow me.